know where I am? Yeah, I'm playing Roblox. Not very good. I just want to stick the jump. Okay, okay, okay. I'm back. Yeah, Roblox is so fun, right? Hi, I'm Camille from the Children's Room, and I'm here today to share with you a little bit about what makes Roblox so unique and contributes to its popularity. And during this important week, um, for those of us who love the internet and all things social about it, it is Digital Citizenship Week. So I'm going to share with you some ways that you can keep your kids safe when playing online games like Roblox, as well as some ideas in, on how to talk to them about their online presence. So Roblox is a global gaming platform where literally millions of people gather every day to play in user-generated, these immersive 3D worlds. So I decided to learn a little bit about Roblox when our library friends stopped asking about Minecraft and started asking about Roblox. So I kind of peeked over their shoulders and asked them some questions. And what I saw was like, it looked like a website with lots and lots of different games. And then I kind of made some assumptions on like, oh, you know, there are probably um, lots of advertising and it's probably spammy. And they're, I knew that we were having some difficulties with the games on our computers. I'm like, oh, probably downloading viruses. And I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. And it wasn't until I decided to ask a few more questions, poke around the website a little bit, that I really understood how cool Roblox really is. So... It is kind of more similar to an app store than a, than a game because you can literally find games that users have created in literally any genre. So you can search and find you know, chase games and uh, simulation games where you can build worlds and houses and hang out with your friends. You can find obstacle courses, holiday themed games. Um, the really cool thing about all of these different games is they are created by users on the platform. So Roblox is free to join and free to play. And it is available to play on cell phones and tablets and computers and the Xbox for cross-platform play. So I think that has been one of the reasons it has become so popular is, you know, everybody has their different devices. They can, they can, or we can all play together, right? I remember even a few years ago, Minecraft wasn't like that. We'd have kids that would want to play on their phone with somebody who was on our library computers and they wanted to be on the same server and they couldn't do that. So, so now I think, you know, it has really become popular, especially when we have been spending more time indoors and online, we are looking for those ways to socialize and, and Roblox has really become popular for that reason. So these Roblox developers, average age is about 20 years old, they, can make a very lucrative career out of building games on the platform. So these two 18 year olds, some of the game's top developers, they've paid for college by making games on the Roblox platform. So if you're curious about how they're making money, because you know, I did say it's free to join, free to play, right? So just like in the real world, competition, like, I want to get ahead. I want to skip that difficult thing. I want a special tool to use. Um, competition and consumerism. Like, I really want that cool outfit or I really want that, you know, cool hairdo. Um, that drives spending of the platform currency, which is called Robux. So you get Robux, Robux in a number of different ways. You can buy them in certain denominations, or you can actually purchase a monthly subscription to Roblox, and then you get an allowance of Robux. And the developers, through the spending in their games, and, and some of the games costs cost a little bit of Robux to play, but little bit adds up, right? They can exchange those Robux for big bucks, right? And that is how they're actually making, some are making millions of dollars doing this. So, like I said, it doesn't cost anything to play. And look at me, you can get a pretty good look going for free. <laughs> but just be aware, the game does have spending. So recognizing its position as one of the top sources of online entertainment for children under 18 years of age, Roblox invests heavily in uh, digital safety 
digital civility and online safety. Um, they use a combination of low-tech methods like actual humans monitoring chat, monitoring gameplay, as well as very high-tech methods like artificial intelligence. They work with companies like Microsoft to um, use AI to monitor behavior patterns of online predators. So I'm going to take you to the Roblox for Parents website. It is kind of fun to poke around there. There, there are hours and hours of content from pretty interesting people that work at Roblox. I mean, they're all very young and uh, kind of live in the dream life for many, many young people these days. They're getting paid to spend all day talking about and play video games. So um, let's head into the site. All right, so I'm gonna take you to Roblox for parents. So here we go, it's a very attractive website. And we'll start here. So here is some information. It's kind of a high tech way that they're um, keeping us safe. They are checking for clothing on the avatars to make sure they're all wearing appropriate attire. Um, this is a really important one, the reporting system. So we'll talk a little bit about how you can report um, bad behavior, players, or game content. And we'll go through, here's a little video of how to do it on a cell phone. I think more players perhaps play on a computer and we'll, we'll find that reporting system on the computer as well. Chat filter, so this is an example of how they use high tech and low tech methods for monitoring chat. They have humans that are scanning chats and probably some computers to help filter that as well as um, just software moderation. And customizable parental parental controls. We will talk about that too. Um, you can create a pin so that these settings cannot be easily modified and you can um, set it up so that chat is restricted as well as games are restricted for very young players. So it's an interesting site. There's lots of um, lots of content that if you're at all interested in in the games that your kids are playing or just video gaming in general, you might like to take a peek. So one of the most important things that you can do if you have a young child playing Roblox is making sure that the when the account is set up that the uh, appropriate age is used on the account. So accounts for children ages 12 and under are um, much more stringently monitored. All chat is filtered to prevent uh, inappropriate content as well as personal information from being shared on the site. Uh, players have different uh, safety settings based on how on their age. So the account's age is displayed for, for you as the user but not to anybody else in the game. So. Okay, so if I set up a practice account, you can see right here, so that we could go through and um, talk about some of the different account settings that you can change in Roblox. So you can see right here, as I mentioned, um, it's showing that this is an account for a child under 13. So if we want to go in and look at the settings, we go to the gear in the upper right hand corner and click on settings. So right now I don't have a parent's email in here and we'll talk about why that is going to be necessary if I want to enable some of the account restrictions. Birth date has been established as under 13. If we go to security, here is where we can create an account pin. So it's currently not um, enabled and and Roblox recommends that if you establish any of these security settings that you create a pin so that they cannot easily be undone. Um, so I don't have that enabled. If I do um, click that, it says that I am required to update my email, so that's why I didn't do that. So the most stringent setting that you can establish on Roblox is under this here. It's called account restrictions, currently disabled. When I enable account restrictions, this, it says right here, this account can only access curated content on the platform. So curated content is specifically geared for children under 13. It just has a higher level of scrutiny. No guns are allowed in those games. Um, 
and it's still, you know, kind of goofy violence, goofy cartoon violence, but no guns. And um, also significant to enabling account restrictions when we go to privacy. The account, the privacy settings are all, contact is all set to off. And this is not, you can see when I hover over it, I can't change these. I can't change any of these messaging features. So that is the most stringent. If you go back, if you would like to maybe not restrict the type of games that are available, but would like to, you know, change some of these um, contact settings you can so if we do we can do these are off now if we set to default kind of defaults to friends you know if you are friends with somebody and it's sort of like on other social media platforms where if you go here if you go to friends here you can search for somebody in the search bar and then you can send them a friend request and they can accept or or deny it so if it's um go back to our settings and under privacy. So who can message me? People that I've already accepted into my, you know, friend group. Who can chat with me in the app? Uh, people in my friend group. Who can chat with me? This is everyone. So if we want, we can change that to no one as well. So there's um, app chat and then there's in-game chat too. So um, talk to your, this is, this would be a great thing to talk to your kids about. Um, who they talk to when they're playing the games and how they decide if they do choose to friend people that are not part of part of their actual friend group how do they decide um, who would be somebody that they would like to you know play more games with I think that is a very appealing part of this game and it is common for kids to make friends with others online so that is a great thing to talk to your kids about so again let's go back privacy is how we change these chat settings um, down here as well other settings who can invite me to private ser servers if you stick around to the end I'm going to talk about private ser servers again friends who can join me so when you're when you are in a game friends if you have it set up that way can see that you're in a private server or in a in a server itself and you can change that who can join me you know, no one can see where, you know, can see where I'm at in the games or friends or friends and users I follow. So who can see my inventory? That's all the stuff that you accumulate. Same thing. It's okay for everybody to see it. Just friends. Um, sometimes the bad behavior on Roblox stems from people wanting to trade or buy things that you have. So, you know, you could see how not allowing everyone to see what you have <laughs> could prevent some bad behavior, right? All right, so I'm going to show you how if you're playing a game, I'm going to jump into Meep City right now. If you are in a game and you want to report something or somebody, it's really easy. It's easy to find. So if I go up to the upper left-hand corner and just look for the little Roblox symbol, I can report. There's a flag here, so I can report a player or a game. And if I report a game, it's inappropriate content is the only choice. If I switch over to player, however, I can choose the player's name and a laundry list of things that you can report. So then just submit. So. Very easy to do, very easy to find, right up in this upper left-hand corner. So I wanted to mention one additional fun way to kind of establish more private play on Roblox. You can actually set up private servers for Roblox friends to play. So people that are connected as friends through Roblox can play together on their own servers. And it is, you know, sometimes it's free or it's very inexpensive. Like I set up a private server for a library event and it cost me the equivalent of about 20 cents for a month's worth of play. So I've been considering doing that, setting up some library 
um, servers for library friends to play together. So if that's something that you think your kids would be interested in or you're interested in, you know, say say something in the comments so I can kind of gauge the, the level of interest. It's something I would, would consider doing as we head into winter and we're looking, you know, to spending more time inside playing. I think that might be kind of fun way to connect with library friends. So the really fun part to talk about for me as an educator is Roblox Studio. That is where the magic happens. That's where the games are created. And it's kind of like this big giant sandbox where creators can jump in and build terrains and, and buildings and, and obstacle courses. And then they can plop their player right in the middle of it and play as they are developing. Um, and when they're satisfied with what their game looks like, they can just click a few buttons and publish that game to the Roblox website so that anyone with an internet connection can play their game. So if you head to Roblox for Educators or Google that, there are hundreds of hours of online content to help game developers from the very beginning on up to highly sophisticated developers. There is a developers community that is very strong. Uh, speaking of beginners, that's me. I'm going to be putting together a video kind of like this that shows how to build an obstacle obstacle course. I'm going to be using one of the courses on the Roblox for Educators website. So I've included a link to download um, Roblox Studio as well as the link to Roblox for Educators, um, the actual course I'm going to be using. So if anyone wants to try that on their own, they can, or certainly I hope you'll, you'll look for the information about my video. It will come out in about mid-November and I hope you'll join me. So I've included some online resources for parents about online safety and digital civility. I did some searching and one of the ones that I found to be just really thorough and engaging was put together by Cornell University's Social Media Lab and Common Sense Media, which some of you may have heard of before, and it's called Social Media Test Drive. And it is a self-paced course and there are modules for your child to learn, practice, explore, and reflect. And so the practice part of it is through these online simulations. And then the reflect questions are really excellent jumping off points for discussions with your children. So I went through one of the modules, I picked one out, it was called um, Healthy Social Media Habits. And the lesson started out by talking about how it is like in the business interest of social media companies to keep you online, right? And it talked about some of the ways that they do that through like the notifications bells and through um, video autoplays. I'm like, Wow, yeah, you're right. So it's really interesting information and they're great things to let your children just be aware of and even your family, even adults to be aware of. And, and a lot of those things you can control um, by changing app settings. So I've included a link to the social media test drive in the information with the video. Um, I know that some of these conversations can be tough and awkward and especially depending on the ages of your children, but I think they're really worth having, especially um, since our time online is probably at an all-time high right now, and I, I anticipate that it's going to remain high um, for at least a little while. We're while we are still doing some work online and some schooling online, so um, I think that these conversations can be highly effective, especially when we take a look at our own social media behavior and are honest about them and maybe reflect together as a family on ways that we can do better with balance and with paying attention to things that we see that and talking about things that are, you know, not behaviors that we think are. Thanks for spending some time with me. I really appreciate it. And if you found something particularly interesting or, or valuable, please let me know in the comments. And also, importantly, if you could let me know what Roblox games I should play next, leave that in the comments as well. And if you don't know, ask your kids and let me know, all right? Thanks.